Martin Fletcher reports from Tehran. I wake up sometimes thinking about different situations I've been in or people I've met. Three NBC newsmen were taken into custody by the Khomeini forces today, correspondent Martin Fletcher. Probably the most disturbing remnant for me is that there are certain things I think about that I can't stop thinking about. Everybody is asking for help. Everybody's lost somebody in the massive crowd down there. It's just a sea of misery. Hi, I'm Martin Fletcher. I'm a retired NBC News foreign correspondent and bureau chief in the Middle East. Welcome to NBCU Academy. Early in my career, I was a cameraman in Cyprus. You couldn't see the anti-personnel mines. They were buried in the dirt, so you couldn't see them. My friend of AP photographer, he trod in a landmine and he got blown up. And I filmed most of that. My correspondent was blown up. And the sandman was killed. That was in such shock. Four other people wanted his stomach blown open. Everybody was getting hit by shrapnel from these landmines. And I was just standing there, lucky. Nothing touched me. Even though I was standing there filming. I thought, I'm dead anyway, I'm going to film it. But then, I had to walk out of the minefield. That was intense. That was bad. That was like every step, you know. Which way should I go for Christ's sake? That was a nightmare. It only goes to show just how badly defined the front lines are. Still a lot of emergency responders here. There's not much sympathy for journalists who have PTSD, but it's a very real thing. Journalists suffer the same as anybody else. It quickly turned ugly. The excitement is just too great in Cape Town today. When we talk about post-traumatic stress disorder, we're thinking about all the different ways that people can be changed and injured by trauma. Trauma is really complicated, and for journalists especially so. Anxiety, anger, agitation, difficulty concentrating. Sometimes people become numb or even avoidant of normal kinds of experiences. Sometimes the world in the aftermath of trauma can become a dark place. I definitely have some of that. There's no doubt about that. It manifests itself with me. Is that I just can't forget certain things. They just sort of keep coming back. PTSD is mostly found among first responders, soldiers, police, medics, the first at a, at a terrible scene. All those people have a job to do, right? Then the journalist turns up, they're seeing the same stuff. Journalists to me are as crucial frontline responders as anybody else. It's just that we have a very distinctive and special job, essential to democratic society and democratic decision making. That's my job, was to tell people somewhere else what they're going through. This is the last day in the life of Fida Ibrahim. So we had this dilemma of deciding to film somebody until they actually literally died on camera of starvation. Knowing, my God, what a, what a morally, ethically difficult thing that is to do, maybe totally wrong. All we can do is add a little bit of dignity to her dying. The missionary nurse who was looking after this young woman said, no, no, you've got to keep doing this, keep filming, this is very important. And in the end, you know, she died on camera. It was an extraordinary story on nightly news. It should be easy to treat TB, regular antibiotics. But weakened by hunger, Fida had no resistance and died. She was 20. Don't let me die. All journalists are preparing to go into a traumatic situation. It's the nature of news. The Russian soldiers who were in this were just incinerated. All that's left are just some burned out bones. Sometimes a single overwhelming event is going to leave a journalist permanently changed. Sometimes there will be a kind of long run of assignments where people do fine. Trauma, when it is unaddressed, can become a kind of psychological spin cycle that can be very destructive to a journalist's ability to work or to their intimate life or to 
just their ability to be a whole human being. We as journalists are resilient. Covering trauma is not automatically a one-way ticket to PTSD. The first resource that's available there to all journalists, and this is crucial, are your colleagues. When trauma is left alone in our heads, it becomes that dangerous spin cycle. The second resource is trauma-trained psychologists. Each of us as a news professional needs a little bit of a self-care plan. Getting exercise or doing yoga, meditation and mindfulness. Getting enough sleep. Forensic investigators are exhuming the bodies from this mass grave and war crimes prosecutors are on the scene. When I started out in reporting, the, the general attitude was, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. But that's a really dangerous attitude. It's so important for any journalist who feels injured by their work to know that help is available and to know that it can get better. It's not painful, you know, I don't suffer, but it's certainly real and not surprising, I guess, given the things I've been through and the people I've met, that I should still think about them.